All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And of course, thanks for subscribing. We're back at it. And apparently uh, there's good news. We're hearing that version 14 is on the way. A few weeks, a few months, whatever the Elon time is. But basically, Elon basically tweeted, or I don't even know if you call it tweeted anymore, X'd, posted, posted on X. There we go. Um, that they're going to be adding, they're working on a new model that has 10 times the parameters. And that's going to be the version that's going to be called version 14. Still supervised, not yet unsupervised, but it's a updated model, which is going to update the overall experience. Now, for those that don't know um, or not very familiar with the details, I try to keep it as high level as I can. But basically, when it comes to AI, it's all about the data that it's trained on in terms of how it performs, the inputs and the outputs effectively. And the difference between hardware four and hardware three is that hardware three is not able to handle, right, the parameters that hardware four does. So when we had hardware three and hardware four at parity, they were using the same level, number of parameters. They went four X, four times the parameters for hardware four and version 13. That's why version three is still stuck, excuse me, version uh, hardware three is still stuck on uh, version 12, while hardware four is utilizing version 13. Version 13 is leveraging four times the parameters. The parameters are the, basically, uh, the mechanisms used by Tesla, no, no details of what the specifics are, on how they train the models, train the AI models that run the car and how they perform, the inputs, the outputs, how the car learns, from the input that's received uh, through video and through the cameras, and then what the output is in terms of the performance. So the parameters are the big are, are the big factor and the limiting factor in this instance between the difference between hardware three and hardware four. So version thirteen is using four times the parameters of, ver of version twelve, and what it seems to be is that version fourteen is going to be using ten times the parameters of version thirteen. And that's what's going to be the difference here. So they're saying great improvements as well as significantly reduced nag in terms of what you can do in terms of looking around, using the screen, so on and so forth, which is what, what we all said, and what we all predicted and all thought. Again, just taking those baby steps towards being unsupervised, being very cautious, which is great. Great news to hear. Um, looking forward to to that build and what that what that entails uh, and what new features are there. What I'm looking for specifically is some of the things that are in the release notes or that were in the release notes about coming soon, things that were upcoming. I don't know if they're still there anymore, uh, but they definitely were there before. This is right now is version 13.2.9, which we've been on for a while uh, through various different versions. But yeah, I can't even get, there's no more uh, older release notes to be able to show, but the FSD uh, release notes showed some additional capabilities that they were gonna unearth. Look at that, good job. Car came out of nowhere. Good job getting around this little uneven lane here with the, with the car sticking out. Great job. Yeah, but the release notes sort of signified that it's no longer there and that's okay. Uh, I have copies of that. And basically there were additional features that were coming soon to version 13 that included um, increases to the output, the resolution, the speed in which it's receiving data, the speed in which it was learning off that data, not quite the 10x parameters, but also more and more importantly, um, talking about the parking lot features, right? The destination features, if you will, right? When it gets to the destination, what does it do? Right now it can do some pretty cool things, but it's highly unpredictable and it doesn't always work, right? So sometimes it'll park, sometimes it won't park, sometimes it will park head in, sometimes it will park rear in. It just really just depends on what it is. Sometimes it'll just stop in the middle of the road. Sometimes it'll pull to the side very unpredictable. So adding those destination features would give it the right details, again, maybe using additional parameters, to be able to park properly at the destination. Find a spot, uh, you know, parallel, perpendicular, you know, whatever the situation calls for, and just go park. Or more importantly, and more useful to everybody else, would be to park in your garage, wherever your garage is, or being able to designate what your garage is and have the car park itself in and out your garage. So now you can truly use FSD straight from the garage and it brings you back home and you don't have to take over at all. It can pull you right into your garage, which, which would be great for those that have garages. And then maybe if you're in a situation where you don't have a garage, you have a parking spot, or maybe you have a garage, but you don't park your car in the garage, it will pull you into that spot, maybe in front of the garage, in front of the house, wherever that might be, 
in front of your apartment or your designated assigned spot, that would be kind of cool too if you have a parking garage in terms of like an apartment building or something like that. So very cool stuff on the horizon with FSD. And as you see, as I'm talking, version 13 is still great. It's still phenomenal, um, you know, very usable, still has its issues. We talked about them ad nauseum at this point because it's been the same release over and over again. But uh, again, I use it so much. Again, I have Plaid, so I enjoy driving, right? And if you have a Model 3 Performance, I'm sure you enjoy driving, or a Model X Plaid, or uh, even the, uh, the classic uh, Model Y Performance, you're gonna enjoy driving. But the times you don't feel like driving, and you wanna take a little trip somewhere else, you enjoy the luxury of being chauffeured around, which again is, is cutting edge and understated from a marketing perspective from Tesla. Uh, I, I did see an ad come out recently, a little billboard to experience FSD for yourself. They're doing a lot of videos, viral videos, social media videos that uh, have owners posting their experience, which is great. But at the end of the day, um, it just has to be infallible to get that take rate up has to be infallible and i'm not talking about tesla enthusiasts i'm talking about the layperson or the person who just bought a tesla just because it was a trendy thing or who just bought the tesla because they enjoy the the car but they're not so much into the culture right so they don't really know too much the ins and outs of fsd or they didn't buy fsd when they bought their car those are the people we're talking about and that makes up the masses so if you can get them on board by showing that it's infallible and that it's super safe um i think the rest will fall into place but man, it, it just feels so good, no matter what car, no matter what Tesla you got, uh, as long as you have FSD, either hardware, thir hardware three or hardware four, that you're just being able to move around with this level of technology and nobody around suspects otherwise or nobody around has that capability. Um, I had the unfortunate privilege, if you want to call it a privilege, of riding a, a, a gas car uh, when I was away on vacation, not fun. Not fun at all, having to drive long periods of time, your foot, your ankle, just pressing the pedal. I know the first world problems for sure, but once you go this way, it's hard to go back. And you kind of have to think about like, how do, why did we never think about this before? How come no one ever did this before? How come no one ever tried to do this, you know, the way that it did it before? Good hard stop. There is no turn on red. It's gonna go for it. I'm gonna disengage. Um, it's 7 a.m. It's a conditional no turn on red. So it's no turn on red Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. So we're here at 12 p.m. So we're within that window. We can't make that turn on red. So that is uh, I'll just flag because I missed the prompt. Um, just no turn on red. This, this is the same, probably the biggest issue with version 13 right now, uh, as well as version 12 uh, is just the fact that it, it just tries to make that turn on red. It doesn't understand the conditional signs. I guess I gotta go up a little bit. There we go. Doesn't understand those conditional signs. But again, I anticipated that I knew it was gonna happen, so I was kind of at the ready. Um, if you don't expect it, it may just go ahead and blow past that no turn on red, and that might have that might be a problem for you. It might not be, depending on who's around. Um, I don't like to, to take chances. So uh, yeah, it is what it is. But again, great, great technology, great to have. Riding around the gas car was just miserable. Um, everything is just so manual, the push button start, the, the put it in park, the, and I, I don't know if you guys know that uh, a lot of people who have, uh, some of the newer Teslas, they may or may not know that, that for the new Teslas, when you have the, uh, no stock or anything like that, you don't actually have to put your car in park. This is a safety feature that's in place for all Teslas, right? Where you basically come, you know, you can, you can come to a stop car is parked here. It doesn't beep the horn. Just kind of angling around it. Good job. Wish I could beat that horn. But yeah, you kind of put your car uh, at a stop and then you press the park park button or park brake. But for the newer ones, um, you can press the button. You can do that. But what, what they have here for the new models is that when you take your seatbelt off, it automatically goes to park. Now, that's a safety feature on every other Tesla, but that's also a, a usable feature right for the people that don't have stocks who have auto shift or whatever that's kind of like a pro tip right so if you didn't know that if you just got your car and you were thinking like hey i got to keep pressing this park button every time i want to stop you don't have to do that let the car come to a complete stop take your seatbelt off as part of the motion of getting out and it automatically goes into park i'm sure other cars have that too it's not a not a big thing but it is maybe something that people don't pay attention to when they get these new teslas with the, with the swiping on the screen 
Um, they think that you have to kind of press that park button, but that's not the case. So we, we've been rolling like that since 2021 with the refresh where you just sort of come to a stop, take your seatbelt off, get out the car and go. Don't even have to think about it. So I don't, I don't ever have to think about putting the car in park unless I'm not wearing my seatbelt. And that's something I had to always keep remembering to do with the gas car was to put it in park, then turn the car off, then take the keys. It was wild um, just to look back at it, right? When you're in it and that's all you've known for 20, 30 plus years, it makes a whole lot of sense. And it's very, you know, this this concept seems a little bit foreign. Like, oh, why would I do this? This is so too much to handle. But once you go this way, you see the error of doing it the other way. You see the error of, the, of gasoline cars in general, just in how they how their mindset is. That's the thing that kind of sets Tesla apart from everyone else. And I see a lot of other customers, a lot of other uh, competitors doing those same things now that Tesla's done it and kind of take, trying to take credit for it. Oh, you can just get in and put your butt in the seat and your butt starts the car. Tesla's done that from day one. There is no button. Your butt in the seat is the button. You get in the car, you put your seatbelt on, and then you just put it in gear and go. You don't press a button. So Tesla, you know, for all its strengths, definitely is, is pretty soft when it comes to marketing, meaning allowing competitors to use the things that it's pioneered, the things that it's been doing for years, uh, to their advantage and not Tesla's. So I wish they would, you know, kind of toughen up on that. But overall, um, great experience driving these cars, riding in these cars. And I was just so happy to get back uh, to not have to drive a gas car again and go into the gas station and filling it up and smelling the fumes, all that stuff. I had. It's, been a, it's been a minute for me with gas cars. Gonna make a quick run to the electronics store. Thought I'd take you guys with me. Talk about some few things. I'm super excited about version 14. Um, it's gonna be interesting to go from 13.2.9 to 14. I wonder if there's gonna be an intermediary sort of step here going from 4x to 10x parameters. Should be very interesting. And I don't know, you know, obviously. It, Aside from the errors that it's making now, like the no turn on red, if you fix that, I don't know how much better it could get. I'm excited to see what that looks like or even if we'll even notice because it's gotten so good so far. But just that no turn on red is an instance of, hey, it's it's fallible. That's a problem that would turn people off because they wouldn't expect it. I expected it. So, you know, it's cool, but they wouldn't know. And they'd be like, oh, I can't use this. I don't want to use this again. It did something I didn't expect. It surprised me. And I don't like that. People don't like that. I'm curious to know um, Dodge something over there. It's the shadows. I think it's reacting to some of the shadows on the ground, I'm trying to go around it. I wouldn't be mad if that was a pothole, but it wasn't a pothole. I flag it just in case. But just little things like that where it's unpredictable. Yeah, no, no danger, no threat, didn't hurt anyone, didn't cause me to be in a precarious situation um small tweaks which i think again will probably be addressed with those 10x parameters full stop full stop might go a little faster too like it's full full stop now it's gonna go and then we've got the traffic circle up here yields nicely for this one He's going straight. We're going to go for it. Merging in nicely. Go right around. Good job. Another uh, issue that uh, they need to address, and it might not be specific to FSD, is the conflict of speed limits where the car sometimes reads like goes on a highway and the highway says 35 miles an hour, but the highway is 55 plus miles an hour. The car overrides it, but it still recognizes it and kind of you can feel it hesitating to go a little faster because it sees that the speed limit is like blaring that, hey, it's 50, it's 35 miles an hour. It might do it right here. Pedestrian there. Don't know why it beeped, but 
So right now, 25 miles an hour is the limit here on the street. As we merge on, it's gonna change, should change to 50 or 55 once we merge. But until we merge, it's staying on 25. I think you guys can see that 25 on the screen. They're gonna go for it on the merge. Certain signal on gets up to speed. Now it changes to 50, now it's going. See that? But before it got to 50, there was some hesitation there where it kind of still wanted to stay close to 25. And then once it changed, boom, it hit the burn afterburners and now we're off to the races. Small things. Um, hopefully it doesn't cause anybody trouble. Hopefully it's just maybe localized to this region in the Northeast. Maybe it's not everywhere, who knows? But uh, Tesla, Tesla should definitely do that. And when it does this type of thing, which is kind of weird, the lane merges, it tries to get into this lane because it knows it has to get over coming up, but it kind of merges into the lane, thinking it's one thing, but it isn't. That's that divide between visual data versus map data, I think. Good job. All right, at our destination. Now, what's it gonna do? Because you don't have destination options and this varies significantly depending on you know what the circumstance is so we're turning in here the store is right there it's looking to turn in here is it going to park is it not going to park it's going to pull me to the front looking like it wants to pull me to the front it's not great because i don't want to pull to the front i want to park watch that curb we good okay i see you too crowded here All right, so now it doesn't really know what it wants to do kind of pulling over pulling right to the front all right so that's a good example right so pull me to the front which is exactly where the pin is so it, it definitely adhered to the pin which is cool but I didn't want to go to the front I wanted to be parked in a parking spot and some sometimes it'll park in the parking spot it's just unpredictable like that All right, so there we go. Um, that's it for this little quick drive. Let me know your thoughts on FSD 14. What are your thoughts on it? What are you most excited about? What are you looking forward to? I know Hardware 3 folks are you know, pretty interested in understanding what their next step is gonna be, if they're gonna make the decision to upgrade them to Hardware 4, or is there are there more updates coming for Hardware 3 that'll get them closer to Hardware 4's performance in terms of version 13, or maybe there's a Hardware 3 version of version 13 that they could ship as well which again would be a step improvement over what was currently available for, for hardware 3 and version 12. let me know your thoughts in the comments until the next time enjoy your day enjoy your tesla